Welcome to Feedback Friday. In today's episode, we have Heather, who is a triathlete from the UK. She sent through a video to see what she can do to swim faster. She's a fairly new to triathlon and fairly new to swimming and wants a couple of tips on what she can do to improve her swimming and be a lot more comfortable in the water as well. As we go through the footage of Heather here, you might notice a, a couple of things. From this underwater shot, you can see how there's not a lot of stability in the body and in the stroke at the moment. So one of the things we always got to work on is just being more streamlined to begin with. And we typically start with the head position there because you can see how far forwards Heather's looking. Now that might be because she's looking for the wall, but if she would normally lift her head up that much, you can see the result that has on her hips and on her legs. So in terms of her, her body position, she's sitting relatively low and that's going to make things a whole lot slower and a whole lot harder when that head lifts up. So the first thing I'd be looking to do there is just make sure she keeps her head down somewhere in about this position would be good. Keeping it there, extend the neck, tuck the chin in slightly as a, as a way to begin. Now, the other, the other thing we want to look for there too is her posture. Now you can see at this point, there's quite a bit of a curve through the body at that point. So we're probably getting too much of this lower back arch as she's, as she's swimming. And some of that will be coming from the head position, but it also might just be coming from her posture, how she's holding herself. So I'd encourage her to feel like she's going long from the head to the toes, drawing the belly button into the spine and just kind of squeezing the butt cheeks together a little bit, which I know sounds a little bit funny, but that will just give you this tautness and stability through the, through the body so that we're not zigzagging our way through the water or snaking our way through the water too much. It will just help keep you nice and, uh, nice and taut and streamlined. The other thing you may notice too is the breathing and the rotation. So what I was looking at here is when she goes to take a breath, there is quite a bit of a lift and then turn of the head. And that is where you see she loses a bit of stability in the stroke. So at that point, she's looking up quite high. So turning too far rather than looking to the side. And you can see what the legs do at that point. They do kick fairly wide apart, which is like opening a parachute. It's going to slow her down. So we want to make sure that as she's, as she's swimming here, that we can work on that breathing position to be a little bit more to the side. Now, the other thing, and one of the main things that I was noticing here is the, the over rotation. When we look at the front view, we want to aim to be rotating 30 to 40 degrees. When we measure this angle from the front, good rotation is typically 30 to 40 degrees. So if I look at this here, you can see she's rotating to 66 degrees there, which is beyond the 30 to 40. Now, if you're rotating that far in your stroke, you're likely to be losing a bit of balance. You're likely to be dropping your elbow in your, in your catch and you're probably finding that your legs are gonna be splaying a bit out behind you. And she's got a similar amount of rotation here on, on this side. So what I'd be looking to do here is just bring that rotation back a bit. Get the body position, head position right, and then just feel like you're rocking side to side. 30 or 40 degrees, you do not need to roll quite so far. Now we've got another angle here as well, this, this above water shot. And something that might be leading to that over rotation could be the way that she's recovering or finishing the stroke. So you can see here how Heather, when she finishes, rather than pushing back behind her and then bring the arm around out to the side, you might notice how she's pushing back behind her. So that exit is pushing back over her legs or over her bum there. And you can see the results of that with the arm. So you've got the middle of her body here and that arm has come back behind the center of her body. Now that's not a comfortable position and it's not a position of balance either. So when she does that, the arm, you can see how kind of awkward that might be on the shoulders. So if you do get sore shoulders, sometimes it can come from that sort of finish or, or exit. So what we see with really top level swimmers is the upper arm is somewhere out here, the hand and forearm somewhere like that. That is much more comfortable. That is much easier to do. So we've got to make sure that when we finish the stroke that we push back, then bring the arm around rather than push back in that direction and then get stuck with our arm behind us there. So it's happening on the right side and happening a bit on that left side as well. You can just see 
how high that is. So I'd, I'd want to see her somewhere out in that position because it's much more natural, much more comfortable. And that's probably leading to a lot of that over rotation in the stroke. So we might just need to correct that because it's very much a chicken or the egg thing. You know, what comes first? We don't necessarily know, but if we work on both things, then we're going to make sure we actually make a change to it. Now, the other thing that's happening and maybe partly because of how she's exiting the water is when she's entering, she's very close to her head. Now, where we want to enter is if we had our arm out, anywhere from about our elbow to our knuckles. So anywhere in that range is good. Anything before that is going to be too close because it's a long way for the arm to travel in the water if you're having to travel forwards from here. But if you get just that last little bit of extension happening in the water, then it's a lot easier and it creates a lot less drag. And we see this from the side angle. You'll notice how the hand enters very close to the head, quite a steep trajectory in, and then we, she crosses over and then drifts up with the hand. Similar thing on this right side, on this left side, enters very close, comes in quite steep, and then drifts up a bit. So again, that just creates a lot of drag and she's starting her catch with a drop elbow position. So what I'd encourage her to do there is correct the exit, make sure you're coming around the side and then feel like your shoulder and your elbows carrying your arm over the water further, over the water further here. So you can go fingers first entry, further in front of the head and just that last little bit is where you're extending. So she'll have to carry her elbow and, and shoulder further over the top. And it's probably gonna feel really far forwards for her compared to what she's used to doing because I just find that with, with so many swimmers, whenever they change anything that's either overhead or in front of them, it's gotta be quite an exaggerated change to actually make a difference. Now, if she's able to do that, then she's likely to be very streamlined. She's likely to be setting up really, really well in order to begin her catch. So if she can get those things in place, then I think she'll be able to really improve her catch. And this is where a lot of the speed, the extra speed will come from. Now, if we're starting the catch in this position with the fingers higher than the wrist, wrist higher than the elbow, that obviously creates a lot of drag and it takes a lot longer and it's more difficult to then get on top of it and get a high elbow catch. Now let's just go through this, this position here and see, okay, her catch there. The way that we define a high elbow catch is if we draw a line from the shoulder to the fingers, if the elbow is below that imaginary line, it's a drop elbow catch. If it's above that imaginary line, then it is a high elbow catch. And we can see she's in a dropped position. So the amount of surface area that she's got is not a lot that's pressing back. Most of that's going down. So a good catch would look a bit like this here, where that green line is. And that's what's really gonna help her move forwards. But with that much rotation, with the shoulder down that low and the elbow down that low, then it's not really possible to, to do. So that's why we've got to work on those other things first. Similar here, we can see that it's in a, a bit of that dropped elbow position. Now this is pretty typical stuff for someone who's quite new to swimming, quite new to triathlon. And so we always sort of start with a lot of these things in place, uh, but then we can just kind of work our way through the stroke and you know go through the head, body, legs, rotation, go through the order that, that we like to teach things in and just make those changes one step at a time. And I would recommend to, to her to just do spend two or three weeks on each point and then move on to the, the next one. And the thing I'll finish with here is, is, is the legs, and this would be covered in the rotation, but you can see how the legs are kicking pretty wide at times here. So it's just, that's coming from that over rotation. That bottom leg that's bending a lot is helping her just to stop from going even further on the side. So when she's able to get those other things in place, the legs should come together pretty nicely, being a lot more streamlined and working for her a lot better. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna work on your own swimming, uh, check out our eight week faster freestyle course. I'll put the link in the description. It's for swimmers and triathletes who are stuck around that 145 to 220 pace and wanna bring their times down from there. So check that out in the link below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit subscribe and share this video with someone else you know who's looking to improve their own freestyle technique. Thanks for watching.